What's up guys, Joshua Navigate the Wild. Tonight, we're gonna show you how to quarter out a pig. Okay, we were fortunate enough to harvest a wild pig tonight. The pot of them came in tonight at like 8.23, which was ideal, because we could see. But what we're gonna do is show you how to break one down. Shoulders, back hams, neck, tenderloins, back straps, and we have some organ meat here. So I have got the heart, okay? We've just capped the heart, took all the ventricles off the top. Most likely I'll get in here and clean this up and we're gonna grind this, but this and the liver, this beauty, look at this thing, look how beautiful that is. We're gonna grind this up into what's called super beef. So look for that video. When I quarter up my meat and we break it down, what I like to do is I put them in these bins and I cover them with my Argali game bags, just nice and easy just to keep direct cold off of them, okay? I just lay this over the top like that and it goes in the fridge just like this for a couple days. Every day I flip it and it just helps it dry out, get a little more firm and it makes the butchering process a lot easier which is another video that we'll shoot in the next couple of days, okay? So we're gonna put this one in the fridge, get the, li the liver and the heart on ice and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to break down a pig from snout to tail. Let's get started. What I'm doing here is just getting all the dirt, grime off the pig to get it as clean as possible. We've got the pig on the table. Now what do you do? You can see we've taken the guts out. Um, all the organs, we've wrung out the, the butt. So now we've got hams, but everything's open and ready for business. I prefer to do it on its side. I know guys love to like hang them up on gambles and all that stuff. The problem with that is they, they keep spinning around and all that and I know guys tie them off. I've just grown accustomed to doing it this way. There's no rush for me. I'm at home. It's not boiling hot out. The pig is cooled off internally. We got all those guts out so we're good to go. We don't have to rush. Look at how coarse the hair is on this thing. I mean, when you shoot one of these, I shot this guy right here in the head. He dropped like a, like a bag of rocks, but the fur is so coarse. I mean, they can run through anything and they're, they just, they're just impenetrable. It's insane. So the first thing that I like to do is we're going to wring out the back hams and we're going to cut off the hooves and then I'm going to run a line and I go with the hair. Okay, so we're not cutting hair out all over the meat. We're gonna run a line all the way down. And then I'm gonna start to peel this thing, one side and then the other, and then we'll take out the hams, we'll take out the shoulders, we'll get the neck off. His head is like a cinder block. Let's, uh, let's get to work. If you don't have one of these, it's a Piranha, Havilon Piranha. Love this blade because they're interchangeable, scalpel style, and it just makes such easy work of all this stuff. So I'm gonna cut them up here, okay? And we're gonna go right here. Look at that. I'm gonna go right there. Same thing. We're already down to bone, okay? Same thing here, do the same. Sorry for the sounds, but this is the easiest way to get the hooves off. That's one, two. Uh. Same thing up here. We're gonna go up to where the hoof is. We're gonna cut it off. Headshots are great if you can get them because you don't damage any of the meat. Everything stays intact. There's no blown out shoulders. There's no, you know, destroyed necks or any of that stuff. This guy was bigger than I thought. I didn't think he was this big. One, two. So with the Havilon Piranha, I'm gonna run this thing down the neck, all the way down to where the hams meet the butt. And what we're doing here is trying to get that blade 
right between the meat, the muscle, and the hairline. And so you can see this white fat. Sometimes with hogs, you get into them and their fat is a yellow tinge and it's just dirty. It's not as clean. The last couple of pigs we've got off the property have been really white fat, really nice and clean. And this guy was no exception. He was just super clean, nice little fat layer, not enough to really make bacon. You know, you're getting into pigs that are 400 to 500 pounds to make bacon. These guys are just so lean. They live off the land. And uh, so you don't really get that type of fat. But man, it's great. So now I'm just using the tip of the knife and we're working down one side, nice and easy, just separating the fat and the hide from the muscle, kind of exposing these back straps, which you'll see come out. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of meat. And we go right down the hams, down the shoulders, and down the rib cage to be able to get access to those cuts. Most guys will take the tail off and they'll go around the neck and run right down the side of the neck. I have no idea why I didn't do that. Tonight, I think I was just exhausted by this point. But what we're doing is just trying to expose the meat separated from the hide. I'm just pulling hair off as I go and getting up towards the shoulder to see where we can find the cut in for the first back strap. You have a back strap on most animals and most times this is the prime cut for anybody that's hunting. It goes from the neck all the way down to the rump right before you start getting into the hams and it is pure meat. So we take our time and what you do is you run kind of a scooping type motion like you're scooping ice cream around the spine and through the top of the ribs and gently pull and this back strap will slowly come out and before you know it you have one solid piece of meat to be able that's to that's a beautiful back strap all right now we got the first ham and as you can see we are taking the hide off to fully expose the ham and we're just going to get this last bit around the leg off. What I'm going to do is then separate this and push down. And what that does is it releases a ball joint. It's located deep in the ham right there. So you're going to see closely as I get a little closer, I'm going to push down and then you're going to see that ball joint exposed. And it's a socket and ball right there. And so we're going to just cut around it. I'm going to flip it over on its side. And I'm going to come down the side, the back side, and free this piece of meat up, and then we will have a full ham that separates off this pig, and it'll be clean, good meat, and then we'll break that down in a later video. And there you have it. The ham has come off, and you can break this down fully, or you can roast it whole, smoke it whole, whatever you want to do. But there you got a ham. Now we're on to the shoulders. And really what I should have done to just make this easier on myself is run a vertical line down the front or the back of the shoulder. Shoulders kind of seem a little tricky because there is no ball joint. There's just a hunk of meat and bone. Nothing is holding it in place other than fascia, tissue, and muscle. And so once you start to expose this thing, you start realizing that it's really floating right up there against the rib cage and attached to the neck meat and um, it just it's just weird and so I don't know honestly what I was doing I was tired and I'm trying to pop this through the hide I should have just made it easy on myself cut down the the back like I'm doing now and uh, don't worry about the hide just get the shoulder off the body so that's what we're doing on to the front shoulder I'm running my knife up the forearm is what it would be and I'm just exposing it around where we cut then I'm gonna go back up towards the top and I'm just cutting this hide off and peeling it down towards that incision I've made a little lower the reason I want to do this is I'm gonna push up on the shoulder and I'm gonna make sure that I get as much meat as close as I can that's gonna give me two separate meals it's gonna be a blade roast up top and then I'm going to have a lower roast on the bottom that I will slow cook 
in a Dutch oven or something at a later date. We'll get that video. But this is all coming out nice and clean. I'm just pulling it up. I've gotten all that meat that's usually left behind that presses up against the neck. And we're going to pop this thing out, just taking our time and cutting the hide off little by little. And you're left with this clean, nice size shoulder. So what will happen in the next couple of days, this is going to tighten up and it'll dry out. Moisture will leave this and it'll be lean and you'll see the muscle groups. It'll be a lot easier to break down if we choose to do that. I might break one down and keep one whole. We'll figure it out. You always want to be careful. Pigs get these growths. You don't want to bite into that, trust me. So as not to prolong this, basically what we're doing is we flip the pig over and do the exact same thing. So this time, we're just going to speed it up here. I have taken off the back strap, but you're going to get a really good view of what this looks like. And again, it's against the spine and the upper rib cage and this is just going to come out nice and neat in one full piece and we'll be left with a beautiful back strap. You can cut them into segments, you can grill it whole. Sometimes I cut it into segments and I'll leave another one whole for like a family event or something like that. tenderloins. They are trapped up, hidden back here. I know it doesn't look like it and there's not much to them. You can actually take these things out without even uh, cutting, okay? But they're just kind of free floating back here. But it's a super tender piece of meat. I know people are going to be like, I've eaten tenderloin before and they weren't that small. You're right, they weren't that small. They normally aren't. When you buy them in the store, they're gigantic. But that's a tenderloin. Simple. Pure meat. We'll trim this up a little bit. Okay, get some of the fat off of it. But that's pure meat right there. And that's really good. There's two of them. Yep. Yep, so we'll take this. So if this hog's head was bigger, I would take the head and make a Euro mount out of it. But his teeth are pretty small and I've got plenty of skulls. So this carcass is going back in the woods for the coyotes to pick apart. Another piece of tenderloin, perfect. All right. We're coming to the end. We have the back straps, the tenderloins, both hams and both shoulders in our bins getting ready to get put on ice. The last thing that we're going to do is stick to the neck. Now, traditionally, I would just saw the whole thing off. But this was short, stumpy. I had plans for it already. So what I did was I went ahead and just took off as much meat as I could without actually sawing through the neck. I just didn't feel like sawing through the neck. I'm going to turn all of this into Italian sausage anyway. And so I just went on one side cut off as much meat as I could and I flipped it over and I did the exact same thing to the other side took off as much meat as I could and that gave us about with some other scrap from the legs and stuff like that about six pounds of Italian sausage that's it folks that is a pig quartered out and then we will show you how to butcher it up once it's aged for a few days navigate the wild